Oh, look at that, Roxy. <laughs> Big sausage. Can Grandma have one? You sure? Thank you. <laughs> Yes, please. Have a drink, then. Let Grandad film you, Roxy. Rox Roxy? Ah, let Grandad film you. Where's your sausage? Eat the sausage with Grandad. Please. Good girl, come on. Craig, you can open all up now, Craig. Oh, yeah, I'm opening up. Are you what's this? Let's see what's going on here. Don't fall over my way. Thank you, Some call this paradise, the everlasting English beauty of the Exmoor landscape. It's the home and inspiration of country-style camcorder man, Johnny Kingdom. But Johnny doesn't just video family get-togethers. He's used the skills and knowledge of a born countryman, together with a domestic video camera, to capture some of the most enchanting scenes of English wildlife ever recorded. With none of the expensive high-tech equipment or special tricks of professional filmmakers, Johnny has recorded an intimate portrait of the magical world on his doorstep. Oh, my friend. Beautiful. Well, you put it in that. This is a wonderful shot. And a little fox. You are some little thing, you. As a licensed deer stalker, Johnny's stealth can take him to within a few feet of even our shyest wild animals. The rewards of his patience and cunning are remarkable. Christ, this snake is coming straight at me. It's a tree of top snake. He's right beside me, man. I mean, this is a lovely thing to see. A pricket playing in the wall. Beautiful. Another very hard bird to find. A great spotted woodpecker. some young badgers playing outside with the set, like a playground, getting rough and tumbling around. This is a shot you may never see in your lifetime. Now the stag will actually serve the hind. It's one of our fastest animals. These deer are very dangerous in the month of October, in the rutting season. The sound you just hear then was a roar for the challenge of other deer to tell them to stay away. Now this shot took me over four hours. I was in a tree and we started very early in the morning. You're about to see something that you'll never see again in your life, I think, Speck. I've been deer stalking all my life, but I've never seen deer wallow like this. 
It's so natural. I'm in a tree 15 feet high. I've waited here for five days. The longest, I was on a branch for four hours. You just seen that calf? Well, it's getting on near the end of October, and that calf still got spots on. So it must be a late calf. I think it's about the 20th of October. Take notice of the hind in the center now. She'll put her foot on the back of the other one to move it on. What I'm saying, that's my place. Now look, see that? One by one, they come into the wallow with a big royal stag coming in in the background, top of the picture. That stag got all its rights three and three, which is a royal head. They call it the queen's deer. There's only one queen's deer. It's bow bay tray, three each side. As you watch the stag, he strokes the top of the water with his antlers. They're sensing where the deer has just been. This is one day I shall never forget. Anybody can go in a park and get these shots, but this is in the wild. This is in Southwood, near Bickner Bridge. What do you want better than that? I was a timber feller. You know, I've done dangerous trees as well, you know, with the, with the tractor, like, you know. I was driving a, a winch tractor and reversing back with the anchor off the ground and a chain broke and the hydraulic arm flied through the back of the cab. I was reversing and hit me smack in the face and it gave me four fractures. I mean, I was done with the doctor for a fair while, you know, and I didn't know what to do with myself. I wanted to go back on the timber again, but I loved my nerve was all to pieces, you know. I went, so I, they gave me tablets to take, and I got into the wildlife, and it seemed to take the pressure from me. My mate, let me use his video camera one day, and uh, this has started me off. I've always loved seeing wildlife, but since I bought that video camera, I just kept going just nearly every flipping day. It was a hobby. And then I started showing them in the village hall and places like that. And people kept ringing me up. So I, I made it into a business, you see. And I, they kept asking for more films. OK. If you send the check in the post, and as soon as the check arrives, I will um, post it in 24 hours. Thank you. Bye-bye. Why -bye. Right, then? Then I started putting them in the shops, and they keep asking me for the next video, then the next video, and so on, like that, you know? I've made seven videos all together. All the local people have got my films now, around this area. I've sold several thousand. But I've named myself JFK Videos, you see. Johnny and his wife, Julie, live in the North Devon village of Bishop's Nympton, just on the fringe of Exmoor. They've lived in this area all their lives. I was born down in the corner, down there, like, in that well, the next house up in the corner, then we moved one place and then the bottom one. I lived here for 24 years, and we used to come up here to get the water at the old pump for their bath water and their drinking water as well. And the well underneath, my great-grandfather built that, put the well in. And we used to pass the pump and go out through the back, behind at the, the old lavatory toilets, the old bucket. <laughs> and put it in the garden, <laughs> make the sprouts grow. <laughs> From early childhood, Johnny had always shown skill at tracking. We used to go out and have a few rabbits, <laughs> food fish like, you know. I reckon a fish comes up in the river for everybody. Back then, that's a good other job to live, you know. Even rabbits, you get done with catching a rabbit. My dad used to take me out, you know. I was, I was only 13, 14, down to the river. We used to take a salmon from the river. I mean, I believe in what my dad used to say. He said, well, if the salmon comes from the sea, he's good enough for anybody. 
<laughs> well, Sally, darling. I argue you going to get this drink. You can get it. I just bought some. <laughs> well, I've known his family and his uncles and all real characters, all old poachers. <laughs> If ever you were out looking for deer, Johnny was always the first one to spot it. He'd always spot it before you could spot it, you know, he was, he was the one. You could go by the Exmoor, you could run around a week, couldn't you? You may not see a deer. Johnny goes up there on a Sunday afternoon, there it is. The red deer of Exmoor is a wild animal. It's not kept in captivity. It's a, a good achievement to go out and try and stalk the deer. They're very, very wild, and you've got to be skilled to do this, you know? You've got to kick out of doing it. It's a great experience to stalk a red deer of Exmoor. Well, learning to be a stalker is a big thing, really. You've got to make, first thing of all, you've got to look at the sky and the wind. You see which way the clouds is traveling, it tells you which way the wind is blowing. I mean, and deer will smell you half a mile away. To stalk any deer. And they must have wind in your face, you see. I crawl a lot. I crawl on my hands and heel or on my belly, you know. If you put on the camera right in front of me and make sure that you've got a bit of cover in front of you, you know. I can get very close, 10 yards, 10 yards to deer, you know, and they don't even know I've been there. And I've gone away from them, left them there, you know. I mean, uh, I could have a kicker of these sort of things, you know. I've been as close as five yards. Wildlife's out of everybody to get out. It's all there, but there's patience. Brilliant. What a lovely sight to see. I think I got to my closest hind. Very, very close, looking through a gateway. But they come down here and they think they think they know everything. And they just drive through the moors and open the sea deer. They've got to get out of the car. They've got to get out and walk of it. You've got to walk to see them. And if you want to see a, a, a bunch of nice stags, go early in the morning. Very, very early. I'm talking about up past four or five o'clock. Cold weather takes some beating. I get the rheumatics terrible. I mean, I get my joints. I got a bracelet on, see? I got a bracelet. I wear a bracelet on purpose. But, I mean, never took that off. 48 hours, my hand would seize up, you know? So I soaks in the bath, you know?
I saw the buzzards circling in the sky, so I decided to climb up the nest. So I climbed up a beech tree, and it was fairly high, man. And uh, I found two eggs. So I climbed down again, left it alone. I don't interfere when there's any eggs around. I go away and wait. The next time I went back to the buzzard's nest, there was one egg and one chick. And I thought, well, it must be an adult egg. So then I decided to spend a long time with the buzzard. I don't think I've ever disturbed one bird's nest in my life. I don't intend to do things like that. If I disturb the bird, I'll go away and leave it, you know? I proved my point because I followed the bird right until he's left the nest. A nice wing spread. I should say about another fortnight. And this bird will be gone. I've got myself back around again towards my haversack. To go down the tree. Well, there's a nice shot. I saw them actually come out of the nest and onto a branch. And they fly away happily, you know? But I got a hell of a kick out of a bird when he's feeding the young ones. Because I bring it home, you see, and look at the television. And cool, I got a hell of a feeling for that. I mean, it's fantastic to see a little bird passing a worm or a, or, or a maggot or something like that to a young bird in its nest. I think it's great to do something like that. It's a closer shot of the red star. You can even see the flies in its beak. It got its nest in a disused rayburn. You'll see the bird go down through the hot plate. This is a spot of firecutter's nest. There's three little chicks in there. And as you think, by the end of the day or even tomorrow, they'll be gone. You have a pair of goldfinches, the cock and hen bird, feeding the babies at the same time. Very rare thing. Although Johnny has now sold more than 5,000 of his wildlife videotapes, he still hasn't given up his day job. My dad learnt me to dig graves. Um, we used to dig them evenings because we hadn't got much time, you see. And uh, he's shown me the way to do it. You know, I'm getting on, I'm 54 now, you know, and it's hard work. And now I'm hoping to show Craig to, to take on from it. You know, my youngest son's called Craig. He's thinking about taking it over. Have you got on, Craig? <sighs> getting there, Dad. Well, look, for start with, Craig, then. Let me put the fork down, look. You've got to get this right here, look. Perfect. Along here, the shape of the coffin, you see? What, then you? Yeah. OK. When I dig a grave, I'm doing somebody a favour. I think it's the person in the box. I'm saying, well, I'm doing them a favour, you know? Doing them a guy indeed, and put it that way. It takes some doing sometimes. Yeah, a favour, it's got to be a favour, isn't it? Put them at rest then, isn't it? My idea, this is my idea then. I like to be buried in a grave because I get the thought that you're still there. I mean, cremation to me is a little bit too final. That's my opinion. I think I should be buried in a grave. Craig's helping me out a fair bit now, you see, you know. Um, Craig will take over from me. I hope he will in a grave, you know. It's a very difficult job. That's why you don't get very many people doing it, you know. I think the best of work to do is it, you know. Craig's a little bit like myself, a bit wild. Good worker. The oldest son's called Stuart, and Stuart's a quiet boy, you know. But Stuart is getting married at the registry office. Oh. Look too fast, you do. <laughs> Take your time. Take your time. A little slower. She fitted the wedding and the reception, and I, if I can, depends on if I'm drunk or not. You know what I mean? His son's getting married. That's my day, really, as well. See? <laughs> but I if he can't get drunk when his son gets married. You know? 
my mother-in-law, she's a lovely, nice, nice person. I got a nickname for her, the old crow. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, and everybody else. <laughs> what do I say? I'm sorry about that. I've done wrong, have I? There's one main thing I've got to say. I've always wanted a daughter. And I'm glad to welcome Sue into my family. I got a lovely wife. I met her when she was 13 years old, you know? Mm. She's a very good looking person, you know? And she's very quiet. Not like me, <laughs> like a wild man, you know? Her brother always used to say, keep away from that wild man. to um, Hong Kong and uh, I'd done 19 months in Hong Kong and I wrote to Julie every week and when I come home she waited for me you know and ever since that we've been together I've been married 30 years same girl you know I think I wrote of her <laughs> I know I'm a lucky person, but the trouble is, you see, <laughs> Luke will come to me and say, go, oh, you're a lucky chap. You're a lovely wife. What on earth are doing with you? I don't think I'd live without you, you know? I think the world would put it that way, you know.
been here most of our married lives. Um, we lived here 29 years. Thank you. See you Monday. Yeah. All right. Bye. Bye. I work in the village shop. I've been there several years. 19 years this year. Hello. Can you tell me how much that one is? It's 12. 12. I mean, I was uh, ill in hospital two years ago, and uh, I had over 90 cards, and I just couldn't get over it. You know, I had so many friends, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> You all my class, Sue? I work, sir. Sexy Sue, right. This is a spare. <laughs> Here. Yeah, oh, oh, good shot, huh? Yeah. No problem. <laughs> See, you're just going to look at him. I'll say 12. I'll say 12. Everyone joins in with everything. If there's anything on, the whole village turns out, and, and everyone knows everyone else. But like the farmers, when they want their hay in, everybody goes along to help. And then, um, if anyone's in trouble, they they will all turn out and help you. This is how it is in the village. What? <laughs> Fuck, I was heavy, one of that one. Come on, you, oh. said, you said you was bloody strong. Oh, Christ. Oh. Jesus Christ, Doc. Lumpy, mate. That was an heavy bell, that was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get out of here, just swat. You better go, Doc. Doc. Hey. <laughs> go on, Rambo. <laughs> oh, that's bad. Wait, that was. You have to start from the bottom, they can have this lot off. <laughs> Come on, lads, behind you. Up here. Another one. Too fast. Get back. <laughs> it's a lovely place to live. You know, I mean, the, all the people in the fr in the village are very friendly. They're very friendly to me, you know. They're all the same to me. You know. We seem to all get on as a happy family. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> you go over a pub for a drink and uh, there's a lot of friends around, a lot of friends around, and they just let me know, you know. They know if you say, no, I love wildlife, you know. To get them on the video. And that's how I find out, you see. If you want to see some badger sets, you want to come in I heard in the pub there was a badger set, so I went to find out to have a look myself. The badger goes away when they dig up earthworms. I can see that where the earthworms are, where the badger's been. 
Yeah, definitely here. Oh, here we are. It was one of the worms. But what the badger gets out. See that worm? See that there? That is the earth worm. Now, here's a fine hole. Here, look. This set is very, very fresh. Tonight, we could have some luck. I've got about five shots, and it's only seconds. And I have, honestly, I've, with this, just four and a half months I've been on that thing there. But I won't give up. I'll break it. I'm determined to get the shots I want to get, see? This badger is only two yards from me. As the badger comes back, I have to walk backwards. It is very late at night. And then I built this hide. I got this hide up, and he's only 26 foot high. And I kept going out week after week until I got some lovely shots. My wife, she made me a big cake of honey, a kilo of peanuts, a packet of sugar puffs, right, and some fat. She stirred it all up and, and she made it set about that thick. And I took the badger keg up there. I dig the pit, put two foot down. I broke it up and put the um, stuff in the bottom. And when the badgers come out, they started sniffing around the top. And when it all run out, they started to scratch, like they do for earthworms. They started to scratch. They found a bit more cake. Eating my missus's cake. And I thought that was really brilliant. And I've done this four or five times with the cakes, you know. Something sweet, is it? But, you know, and that's how I get the shots of the badgers. And I got some lovely shots. I got the badgers. I've got the sow with five cubs. I've even seen the boar badger, and I've got them taken down bedding. What do you want prettier than that? Fantastic. What is this then, girls and boys? What are you watching now? Stoats. Stoats. I was driving up a road. I come around a corner, going to see the badgers, I were, to feed the badgers. And then um, I saw two stoats cross the road in front of me. I parked my truck on the road, in the narrow road, to stop the traffic. I run up the road. Don't you ever do anything like this, man. 25 yards up the road, and I laid in the hedge, in the grass, where the stoats went in about there, say. come two more. I just couldn't believe it. Before I knew what I was doing, I had four stoats actually playing in front of me. And I had them for seven minutes. And there's some of the best filming I've ever done, I think, you know. But, I mean, that's brilliant, because I've never seen anything like before in my life, you know. Right, children, here's another wild animal you're looking at. Um, what do you call this? And uh, can you see the difference in the two? One's big and one's small. What's the reason for that? Yeah, he's different, yes, but I'll forgive you, I'll tell you this question. It's two litters in the same den. It's called a den. Oh, I got some lovely shots of fox cubs. Near, near my home, which is Nympton. 
I went down there and I got so close, I squeaked the cob, I squeaked the little cob, and he come right up to me. He wasn't a bit afraid of me, see. I suppose he must have thought I wouldn't hurt him, but he, he come right to me and I was, I was fantastic, you see. He was just going like this to me. But his head falling back when I skipped and I said, you're going to be a film star. I said, I'll get you on telly like this. I was going like this, you know. And he just kept, he kept going like that there. I just crawled. You got to crawl for it, you know. You just stay still. Come on, little fox. You know I ain't going to hurt you, don't I? You know, you know I wouldn't harm you. That's what you're lying there for. You want to be a film star, little fox, don't you? Hey. And that'll bring a fox right up close because the fox thinks it's a rabbit. That's for your supper, you see? I don't only film wildlife, I film fates, weddings, and also local traditions. Anything, you name it, I can video it. At least I try, anyway. it? I can see things on television before, like the way they do it, you know, they think, well, I think I can do this on my own, you know? And that's where I pick it up from, you see? We spend thousands and thousands of pounds, you know? This is a nest of a long-tailed tit. It's a very pretty bird. It builds a nest like an oversized wren's nest, filled with feathers. It's a very rare thing to see. You must stay away from the nest, because I film this nest on remote control, so I wouldn't disturb them. This little bird is called the tree creeper. You can tell the tree creeper by the spots on its back and its white front with a very curved beak. Now this is the gold cress, the smallest bird in the British Isles. This bird is a quarter inch smaller than the wren, with the wren three and three quarter inches long. Here is the dipper. Can you see how he gets his name? He's always bobbing up and down. This is my hide. Now, this took me three months to build. I built it out of an old electricity pylon which had fallen down. This is where I film all my good shots of my birds in the nesting boxes. Let me blow this, did I? Oh, there. Oh, what have we got here? Ah, great tits nest. Yeah, he's occupied, this is. I have to go inside and look through the back of the nesting box and see what's in here. How could get in the hole? <clears throat> yeah. Well, I'm inside the hide and it, look, this is some of the boxes. I'm now, um, Looking into the great tits nest, and there are seven baby ones in there. The parents are coming to and fro from the outside of the building, which I've just took away the glass so I can film the babies. If you look out the window, if you look over there, there's a little box over there, and there's a nut hatch. I've seen a pair of them there. Maybe it's a cockbird. Maybe the cockbird's gone in the nest. But you think it was a cockbird, it's a lot more, more colourful. That's just why you won't stay in there very long if it's a cockbird. Yes. 
Now, here's a lamb which has been killed by something. It's been eaten from the ears down to the front shoulder with no wool around, no blood. So it can't be a fox, it can't be the birds. So what animal is doing this? Beast of Exmoor. That's something I would love to get on video. I've been trying very hard. A lot of people come down here and say, no such thing as cysts. It's a load of nonsense. It's one man you must see, okay, Matt, Mr. Yeah. Briley. Uh, this is going to be interesting, isn't it? Well, I hope so. I know you're yeah, interested well, in yes, these Yes, I am, things. yeah. Um, and what have you got in your nose this time? Johnny, it's an extraordinary thing, you know, that these animals can grow to the size of 250 pounds, and yet people rarely see them. But this is the case with big cats like pumas. And this, this is the pumas, yeah. Oh, yeah well, this it? is actually one of these animals in the wild. Uh, these are uh, yeah. photographs of that pumas. That is the animal there, that actually is. Pumas. I want to take yeah. a picture of them. Where's the best place to go then? If you're going out at night after them, you should have a light with you. I don't say they're dangerous, but they are uh, not as nervous at night. I go on my own now. I go on my own stalking around. But it's gonna take some fanning because it is it's everywhere. It seems to be I think there must be more than one. I was traveling along the road and I saw the heron circling and I saw him flying to the trees. And it was raining hard. I stopped my truck and I bide there for three hours. But I didn't give up because I could see the birds for start with talking their necks up and down and showing their chest about like, you know. You could see that it was trying to make love that sort of way. That's the way I pronounce it. I mean, you may think different. But I mean, that's why I say uh, when the bird is just sticking his feathers out like this, you know, and I thought, well, they're going to mate in a minute. So I waited and waited until I got the shot. Patience. This could be the shot I'm waiting for. It is, too. Here we are. Brilliant. Brilliant. What do you want better than that? I'd like to see him really get into just doing the, the film inside of it because uh, with his grave digging, I mean, he's better not doing that anymore. He doesn't really like it. Um, he's very soft hearted, really. He's, uh, gets very upset sometimes, very often he's got to bury a friend or, and it takes a lot of doing. It's hard to bury four or five of my mates, you know, in South Molden, you know, and that, that hurt me a lot. My hardest job is when I've got to bury little kiddies and things like that, when I've had no life at all. I mean, I believe in the church and everything, you know, but I mean, these things were made this way and when the time comes, that is it, you know. There's no, <laughs> there's no telling what's going to happen tomorrow, is it? gone, you know. I'm a big believer in the church, and so is John. Very much so. I love the carol service.
my life, I believe in everything. I believe in every little thing. I'm, I'm living all right. I don't think anybody else could do the same as I'm doing. Go ahead and enjoy life and try and relax a bit. I mean, wildlife is the thing, well, it's the thing for everybody, really, provided they got the patience to do it, you know? It makes you relax to get out there. Well, I just get a kick out of it, you know? It's beautiful, you know? You know I've been up to London. I don't think I've missed anything up there. Too much smoke for my life. I like Exmoor. I love Exmoor. I could live on Exmoor. I go on holiday, but I, I just don't like going away. I like to stay around in this area. It's my home, you know? It's very quiet and peaceful, isn't it? Beautiful, I mean. I've got a beautiful wife and a lovely family. And you wouldn't have a prettier place to live than Exmoor. You don't have to be rich to enjoy life. And I say that's the secret of happiness. You've been watching Wildlife on Exmoor, filmed by Johnny Kingdom. I hope you enjoyed watching this video with me. I hope to see you in future films. Goodbye, God bless you all.